Here on BBC One now, the residents of Darwin give their thoughts a further airing in Vox Pop. Hey, you! This week, something happened in Darwin that brought the welfare state and its worth into sharp focus. It began with Jack, Ted and Harvey. It's money, it's ruling education again, isn't it? Well, the reason they brought comprehensive education in was it's to say the rich and the poor would all have the same education. Then she's going to reverse all that <coughs> in one way or another by finance now. This is where the Tories are. Everything's got to revolve around money. This silly bloody owl, he said it paper, you have to train your children how to handle spending money. Bloody hell, there's millions of kids who don't get bloody spending money. He's well. He's well. Oh, he's well, they don't need to know how to handle bloody money, they'll get that bloody much. Even today, kids go around with papers. These little lass won't be going around with papers and trying to bloody save it, will they? Here we go, here you are, giving them that. Um, it's too, isn't it? He said, he said, you've got to know how to manage money and all this stuff. Sort of but he marked, actually, there's one road in the bloody desert and he gets bloody lost <laughs> on that. So where would he go on with a pocket full of bloody money? He doesn't want socialists at all. He just wants young conservatives and learn them money, money, money. Everybody has their money with him. But it's a pity it won't work out like that, because there's a bloody lot won't have any money. We'd look well with bloody millions of little Tories running around, wouldn't we? Little purses with locks on. Bloody rubbish. Your bloody owl must be a bloody triplet. I mean, there's 1,400 jobs gone at uh, Orich. And that town will close down. So, have, have, will they have money for education for the children? They won't have. I feel sorry for blokes like... That like Paddy, he's getting five kids. Now the bloody hell can he put a to educate them five kids? He works at bloody corporation, sweeping streets. Now we're going to have five illiterates walking around the streets because he doesn't earn enough bloody money. If we're not careful, they're going average like we were in 1930. That were nothing but slave labour, and this government's trying to get this done. The working class no, in this country on its knees. They've back. They've just they're done a firm in Scotland back. now, and they've all accepted a pay drop of 20 pound a week to keep their job. To keep their job. If you're running them 40 no. pound a week, and it were a case of going on to or a cut of 20 pound a week, well, what would you say, Jack? No, I don't even say no, that. Yeah. because this government's made it so as we yeah, all say, I'm well, we'll take a draw. I'm not disagreeing with that. Because we're all frightened to bloody death to be there to work. Because it's not bloody jobs, so that's why. But Arby, it's the Arby. fear that's making you do it. They've put the fear of God up the working people in this country. Yeah, there's the favourite uh, that we see, H and K Gambler, number 20. He's trying to kill that national album. We're going to try and make it private now. I think we would be better private. For what we're paying and getting Yeah, you'd robbed. be better. Because you're working. How would all them that's not working be better? It's all very well if you can afford to go private, but what happens if you can't? So we, we're paying for everybody, aren't we? A certain few that's working, and this government's going to have le a lot less working Listen, shortly. If private industry collapses at the rate it is doing now, who's going to pay all these electric workers, gas workers, water workers, nurses, doctors, all these that rely on the private sector? private sector goes down, then who's going to pay for it? There's only, sir, there's only the workers that are paying for it, isn't there? The workers that are working for private industry. Yes, and there's going to be less and less, isn't there? Right, so it'll collapse then, won't it? Yeah, it will collapse. What happens if somebody's a with family, your kids are out like that, and you, you can't afford to pay? We don't know, do we? They haven't put it in black and white what they propose to do with that. It'll be on their side, it won't be on our side, it'll be on the upper class side, Jack. This is what I've said to you then, the unions then, I'll have to say, look, instead of going in for 15%, they'll say, look, we'll settle for five, 
but 10% of what we're around, I get, you put it to boot, but let them, let, let bloody unions try and sort it out. Because if it's going to go private anyway, you're going to have to be in some of Man, it's bloody rubbish now anyway. So is it to pressure? Just there, where that red mark is, that's where it's really slow a bit, but otherwise it's not too bad. Yes. What's your job? Uh, maintenance worker. Well, you've cracked the bone at the bottom end there, which means you're going to have to go into a plaster. Otherwise you're not going to be able to walk. What we need to do is just put you on the plaster from there down to your toes, put a walking heel on the end, and you'll be yeah. able to walk on it in a couple of days' time. But in the meantime, you're going to have to rest up at home yeah. with your foot elevated to get the swelling down. And you'll be in plaster for about four weeks. Four weeks? Mm -hmm. And you'll be uncomfortable for about six. Yeah. Someone who has suffered a lifetime and needs all the welfare state can offer is Miriam. Well, I've been disabled since we're five year old. And it was called infantile paralysis then, but they changed it now, like to polio. There was five of us in Darwin that started all at once, but I was one of the lucky ones that lived, you know, because I was such a strong baby. When I met Bob, I think a lot of people think him, oh, he's taking something on, you know, she'll be a burden to him, you know. But as his marriage went on, I tried to prove myself that I could do it, you know. And I had three lovely children. I used to go ballroom dancing, and like, my husband can't dance, I mean, he's like elephant, you know. And then when I packed that up, I went singing all clubs, you know, and then I met my night in army, as you can call it. You know, he's been a good lad to me. We've been like this for 25 years now, in May. So, you know, and it's gone. All right. Come here, Mr. Ramsey. Hello, Tom. Good boy. When you're looking at someone that's disabled, you just look at them and think, uh, well, what's their capabilities? That's what they look at, you know. Uh, they can't walk or they can't cook, they can't make a bed. But to look at anybody and go into it and see what they can do, that's different. It's the same as if you're going for a job. You know, give them the chance, give them the opportunity. And this is what disabled people want today, is a chance in life. And if they're not prepared to give you that, you might as well lie down and die. And I found that all through my working life. I mean, I had a job when I left school, you know. But I've been a few places, and when you've worked there a few days, you're not fast enough, sacked. Well, we had unions then, the after day, you know, they wouldn't have done it. You're out, and you couldn't draw a doll, because you haven't worked that long to get stamps on. So my life, like I say, as far as work's concerned, going for it and getting it, it's been two different things and not a choice for me. A choice for me to work, but a choice for me to get it were different. You know, you couldn't get work because you were disabled. If you have an iron on your leg or something visible that you can see, you're no good. You can't do it. You've got to prove it. And without them giving you the chance to prove what you can do, you're nothing. No, I'll just pop the block just, just there, that's fine. If you have to be off work and you're not in a private medical thing, then you're going to lose money. I get paid when I'm off work. Well, they make me insurance up to my wage, so fortunately I'm all right. But for people that don't get paid when they're off work, they have a job on, aren't they? If they break a leg, I mean, they are going to lose a lot of money. If they say it's for six weeks, like, it's a long time to be about wage, isn't it? 
You can always get the best of anything if you've enough money. And if you haven't enough money, well, you get what's there. But I don't think they'll ever do away with national health because there'll always be plenty of people without any money. And you can't have people walking up and down with broken legs without on them. So somebody will have to do something for them. Take that block out now and put your leg down. I feel better. Yeah, lovely. Put your walking heel on now. You won't be able to walk on it for two days until yeah. it sets. This morning, you know, I went in to collect Mother's pills oh, again yeah. that she has occasionally. And, occasionally. Uh, well, regularly. And I was struck by the number of people who were in the chemist's park waiting for pills. It's absolutely astonishing. It, it was really like Piccadilly Circus. It's rather too easy to get pills. You see, in our mother's pills, she just phones up, a prescription is written out, I go in, I get the prescription, and I get it made up. No doctor sees her, and, um, you know, this is not very good, is it? I mean, I could be taking the pills, really, couldn't I? <coughs> the doctors don't really have time. Before the war, doctors used to give a very much better service, probably because it was a private enterprise, they were in their own business. This would be an argument for introducing some kind of incentives to keep people away from the doctors. I mean, obviously, people need... Uh, there must be a certain amount of genuine people, but there are a lot of malingerers. If somebody goes to the doctor with a bad back, he has a little alternative but to send them to a specialist, thereby wasting the specialist's time. The true blue conservative opinion must sound very harsh indeed. Even sometimes when I'm hearing you speak, I think that does sound uncharitable. Uh, that sounds rather harsh. But what people have to do is to think a further step onwards. If we could have the incentives, if we could keep uh, the people away from the doctors who don't need to go, the wise brigade who attend very regularly. And obviously, I don't think private medicine would be the answer, really, because this, this would be unfair to the pe genuine people who are down and out and need medical attention. But there would, would be one way I can think of, and that would be, instead of to penalise people who go to the who overused the health service, but to reward the ones who don't. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. 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 See you later. While husband Bill is flat hunting in Mallorca, Millie frets about her impending heart operation. In other words, have a point system, yes. rather like the police totting up system, but in reverse. Whereby, if someone doesn't go to the doctor for 12 months or two years, and doesn't make any calls on the health service in any way, then give them a rebate on their national health payments. That then would be fair to them, and it would not be unfair to the ones who really need the sick. Good night now. Come on. Don't you think that perhaps if that was to be brought in, that people would desist from going to the doctor for the sake of the money? All right, that would then sort out the wheat from the chaff. Time I've, I've worked, paid. I've paid for this right. operation. I'm not getting have. it free. Through the National have. Health, I've paid for it. Yeah, yeah. of course you On have. On the long run. Yeah, of course you have. Only, this would be the second time I've been in hospital. Mm -hmm. In all that the years I've been yeah. paying. Yeah, and then it's worrying in any case. Well, this is it. it. And then, if you go and stay in Mallorca, your health probably will be a lot better. Oh, Does well, it all, I always say as well, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. But Bupa wouldn't take me because I've already had none. Mm. I've already had one operation, heart operation, so there was no way I could get into Bupa mm. now. If, if it comes all private, the money it's going to cost, it's ridiculous. Oh, I don't think it'd be all private, would it? You still have the National Health Service. Yes, but not very much. It'd be second class. Yeah, and what good's that? I lived in the States, and my husband was ill, and it cost $3,000 before he got back to his work. If we hadn't got it, that would have been it. We well, couldn't have it. had the medical treatment. And that's what will happen here. It'll be the poorer class of person that's going to have so, to do without. Well, I mean, to say, look at me. Yeah. I couldn't afford to, in a sense. 
No. I couldn't afford it if it went now. And I'm in my tablets after five tablets a day. Forever, really. Yeah, so? Well, I mean, look at the price of those. I mean, now I'm 60, all right, I get them for nothing now. But I'd have to pay for those. And when I did come on pension, I couldn't afford them. They're going back to the 1800s. People awesome. that have money, get it. Get it, well, that's People it. People that don't have, have to do without. Yeah, no, well, this impossible. is it. It's ridiculous. And I think the working class would be up in arms about it, and I don't blame them. Don't really. Well, they'd have to be, wouldn't they? <laughs> Those tablets, I have, to, I have to take tablets for that, you see, and that's what it does for me. For what? Oh, I... For us, I, oh, yeah. I have tablets. Yeah. Well, I take it. four a day. Look at the mess you're in when and you haven't taken a tablet. Inhaler as well, you see, and it's that that... Doctor say that gives me the shakes. It's like you're told go back for these parts. Can I carry on being I, you see, I can't see where you're getting the idea of all this pessimistic, you know, oh, the world's almost coming to an end as far as everybody's concerned. The welfare state, as it stands, it's a, it's a burden to the government. It's non-profit making. People are getting far too much out of it. Uh, there's not enough being put into it, I suppose. If we return to the state where you have to pay for your medical treatment, people are going to be going without urgent medical treatment because they just ca can't afford it. And I think that's deplorable that a government could consider doing something this to the people who have got the least clout, the people at the bottom end of the scale. Like most of them aren't even proposals, they're just suggestions. I know, but it's like Jeff says, people can't afford at the moment to, to even pay for a bottle of aspirin or something like that. You know, when you go yeah. in, because you're one pound off for a prescription, and like Jeff said, people start going without medical treatment, which they need, mm. if it actually comes to the oh, point that people have yeah. to pay. Yeah, but it, and what about these people that are getting free dinners now they can't afford dinners and they're having to pay for the medicines? That's going to be even worse, isn't it? It's still only a suggestion, yeah, but why is it a suggestion? Why, do they, why should it come to the crunch where it's even being proposed? If they want to return, to a 1930s situation, Victorian, yeah. where people, where, where men, you're going to get a hundred men chasing one job. You return to the, to the, to the, to the state where you get the men meeting outside the factory gates every morning, hoping to be taken on for a day's work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they're going to crush the unions, so the unions will have absolutely no clout whatsoever. Oh, so they'll be able to say, well, if you don't want the job, on your bike, brother, and there's somebody else outside that bloody gate will come and take your yeah. job. I reckon so if they started this mean testing. It means they're walking into your house saying, right, we're going to, they'll go through all your personal belongings, they'll check your bank, uh, they'll say, well, you've got a car out there, you can't have that no more, you're going to have to sell it. You've got a stereo there, you're going to have to sell that. You can't have a colour telly, you've got to have a black and white. The man in the street, he's, he's proud. And when he comes on hard times, he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to belittle himself and go cap in hand asking for, for something. If he knows that they're going to come round and, and look and see what he's got in his house, he won't, he won't bother. And this is what they want. They, they hope they're banking on this, in fact. Yeah. If you, if you, I mean, as, as things stand now, if we're suddenly out of work tomorrow, we all go down en masse and sign on a Monday, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And eventually, your gyro comes through. It's, it's a matter of course. It's, it happens automatically. That will finish if they bring in means tests. Yeah, but you keep saying means test. It's, I, I like, well, I know what, what yeah, I know is. what a means test is, but it's a word of the past as far as I'm concerned. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I back to the 1980s. Yeah, but, I mean, where, where have you, where have you dragged it up from? I mean, like, there's nowhere, I can't see anywhere where they've said, oh, they're going to bring the means test back. No, if I have a job and I work for what I've got, and they come up and say, get rid of that car, get rid of this, I tell to get stuffed. Yeah, that's... Because yeah. I've worked all my life for that's that. That's it, yeah, they, right. Then you'd be faced with a situation where, where they've decided that the car has got to be sold. You have to use that money to, to, yeah. to, to survive. Yeah, but I mean, I, this country could never, ever return to the 30s. I think there's something lacking in the education of younger people today. One of the problems that we of our generation complain about is that the youngsters expect to, to have too much money. But this can go right through life. When I see people complaining that they've had the electricity cut off and they're sat in front of the television, both of them smoking cigarettes, which are very expensive, and, they say, and they have the, they're watching the television. How, in my time, you couldn't afford a radio till I was about 15 and everybody had them. You waited, but now uh, 
it seems an essential to have a, a television and sometimes a car. I don't believe it's a breakdown uh, in our attitudes. It's merely that we've been brainwashed into accepting that the world owes us a living. In the, in the 20s and 30s, everyone was profoundly conscious that the world didn't owe them a living. Now, by some mean or other, means or other, you can get uh, some money if you try hard enough for it from social security and I think it is, it is this cushioning that's brought about this I'm not saying the cushioning is wrong but that I, I think this accounts for the difference in attitudes between now and then it was virtually starvation in the workhouse and now there are many many alternatives Leaks of the government's inquiry on the family and state have alarmed many but at the Whitehall the YC's are delighted the welfare state is safe under the Conservatives. The National Health Service is safe under the Conservatives. We, we have Margaret Thatcher's assurance on that. Mm. But what we have got to establish is the cost effectiveness of these services. The private contractors believe they can save something like 40 million a year on the cost of the health service if they are allowed to compete with the direct labour. Now if 40 million a year can be saved by subcontracting, that money can be spent on kidney machines on heart research, on all sorts of health care and preventive medicine as well. And that can be nothing but good. In America you've got the, you've got the Medicaid scheme whereby poor families, families who are unemployed can maintain the, the health and living standards that they require. Uh, and there's no evidence to say that this wouldn't apply in this country either. The biggest crime as far as educational standards goes, that happened in this country was the abolition of direct grant schools. Absolutely diabolic. It was the worst decision that's been made in British education. What, what we're after is a system mm. whereby parents not only take more interest in their children at school, in terms of sort of parent governors, you know, the parent teacher association or whatever, if that was to happen, uh, I'm sure the educational standards are at a lot of these comprehensive schools whereby at the moment there's just sort of general apathy and indiscipline would, would, would be... You're talking you know, about accountability. That's right. Simply that, yeah. accountability. Yeah. I think children are, tend to think in the present rather than the future. And um, we see married couples nowadays are thinking of start, starting home, setting up home with £3,000. Buying a house with £3,000 and getting a large mortgage will surely to save a little bit over the years when they were children to be able to set up a home. The, the, the more, more happy you can make children about dealing with money and knowing what you can buy and knowing what you can get for, for the pocket money you have, whatever, will, will pay off in the future in the private sector with children being able to, to know that they have to earn this money to, to and, and not that they can just go to the government and say, you know, where's my pocket money? A woman's role in life is to look after her children. I mean, the number of examples that you have of women who go out to work for the, for the, for the sake of it, um, you know, to, to bring in extra money and, and to be able to afford luxuries or whatever, whereas they would, they would stand much better stead by stopping at home, looking after the children, making sure that they're educated properly and, and general provision for welfare. Until we realize the fundamental fact we've got to create elites who are good and competent and can take on the competition which the rest of the world poses we're not going to get anywhere if we pursue this politics of envy which the socialists would have us whereby you're supposed to feel guilty if you get on and if you've got ability we'll get nowhere that's why we're in the mess that we're in there's no doubt about this stuff we've got to encourage people of ability to exploit that ability and reward them for doing it because uh, in the long term it will benefit everybody and anybody who is sh short-sighted enough to fail to see that should keep their mouth shut. Really. Their contribution is not worthy of listening to, to be honest. Beautiful. Beautiful. God help us if, if uh, we get a, a new breed of super children um, brought up on the, their idea of what a good moral base is. Um, originality would uh, be out of the window and they would have a, just a, a little race of nice, neat, middle-class conservative robots. Mrs Thatcher was unmoved by the shouts and jeers which greeted her arrival in Lancashire. What right has she to say that the people of this country don't bring up their families properly and that she knows better than we do how to bring up our families? And for someone who preaches um, less and less state intervention in matters like industry and technology to, to come into the, the basic um, core of society, the family life, and to say the state knows best and you will run your family lives the way we think is best smacks very much of dictatorship. That's not democracy, that's, that's a dictatorship. The, the parallel has been drawn by 
um, commentators this week with um, Hitler's um, state in the 30s. The emphasis on the family home, particularly the wife staying at home, looking after the children, bringing up good citizens. I'm afraid it is a bit of a frightening thought. If this is the, uh, the, the thought behind um, the Cabinet's proposals, um, then it's, it's a slightly worrying thing to me. Um, but basically, my, my basic feeling is anger. It really is. How dare she tell me what to do with my family? Oh, there's only one for It's all very well people saying that uh, they're scrounging off the welfare state. The people that say that are in a position, or they think they're in a position where it'll never ever happen to them. But they must never think that because it's not only three million or four million labourers on the dole, there's skilled people, teachers, you know, that can't get jobs and they probably thought the same, it'll never happen to me. Now we all know, we've, we've seen them on telly saying, spongers here, spongers there, they get this and they get other coloured tellies and all. She's talking about people that are sponging, they might be 50 years out, they might have worked all their life and through no fault of their own, they're suddenly out of work. Now should they not have a coloured telly? Should they not have an i fi but it doesn't mean that you have to start suddenly saying the system's wrong because now we've got a lot using it. S system is a good system. And it's not their fault, it's the right of bloody work. But my dad, uh, he did when I was about nine or ten and he did with ulcers. So that were just when uh, National Health come in, you know. Maybe they got treated earlier could have been afforded to get treated earlier in another operation, it might have been a different thing. He was only 36 when he died. I think them that has should help them that haven't. But you need you need reminding, I think. Something has to bring it home to you. You work all your life, if you're lucky, till you're 65, and you have a standard of living, and then suddenly you get to the pension age and they say, right, you can make do on that. Then that shouldn't be. You should be able to keep your same standards up because you've worked all your bloody life at a standard. It doesn't mean because you've got old that then you've suddenly to start turning your bloody gas off and sitting with a bloody big overcoat on. You should be able to enjoy your last, your last years of life if you've worked all your life. Well, even if you haven't, there's people like that are invalids and that they can't work, so you've, we have got to, we've got to support them. But I don't know how we're going to do it if uh, if all industries closing down like it is, because there's no bugger going to be working. I only read today that the number of people having children are now down thirty six thousand a year, right? Now then, if you say that in 40 years there's not going to be enough working and paying in to pay for them that's retired, is there? Somebody's going to have to find the money. Hey, you, did you hear?